Okay, so today let us wind up uh, our discussion on uh, the renewable theory whatever uh, we started in the last class. So uh, in the last class we talked about uh, this elementary reward theorem what we called as ERT. What did this theorem say? If you have a process. So okay, just uh, as a recap what we did, we started with the DTMC, and we, we said okay, let us say start with an initial state i, and I am interested in some particular state j, where s is my state space, and I am interested in my DTMC going back to this particular state again and again. And then we have this sequence of random numbers which we called as lifetimes. right? And uh, we said that this uh, lifetimes are such that these are all going to be independent. So, x n s are independent and then we said that if you look at x n for n greater than or equals to 2, they are IID, it is an IID process. Now, if you consider this case, then our If our ERT theorem, elementary renewal theorem said that this is under the hypothesis that if probability that xj is equals to is 1 and so what did we say? We said that limit as n tends to infinity m of t by t is equals to what would you say this equal, this limit goes to 1 by expectation of 2 almost surely and then we also said that t is also by t. What basically said this, this, this result said as is the average number of renewal in the interval, in, a, in any interval that converges to this rate which is given by 1 upon expectation of x2, right. We discussed this last time, if x2 is going to be, the expected value of x2 is going to be large, that means I am not coming back to returning to my state in small number of times, maybe I am going to take large number of rounds to come back. In that case, uh, I do not expect this quantity to be large, right. This, if this guy is going to be large, this guy is going to be small. This is because this is the average number of renewals in the interval 0 t. Okay, fine. How is this theorem? I'm, we, we said we are really not going to the proof of this, but let us take it. We understand intuitively yes, this should be the correct. Now, what is the use of this theorem? Okay. So, if you recall, I had stated an earlier result which we use heavily in, in the study of DTMC and that result was about when is a state a J when if I know that a state j is recurrent, when is it transient, sorry, when it is a positive recurrent and when it is null recurrent. So, we had stated one theorem related to this, right. 
So, what is that theorem? So, in a DTM, say suppose let us say f i j equals to 1 and j is recurrent. Then we said something about this limit, right? What was this? If j is recurrent, we said this quantity we, we called it something like gamma j and we said that this guy is greater than 0 if And we said that this is going to be 0 if null recurrent. Actually, this theorem is a direct consequence of this elementary renewal theorem. Okay, let us see why this is true. So, remember this, this theorem, where all we used? We used this theorem in the proof of invariant distributions, right? So, when we when we made a claim that for an irreducible DTMC, it is going to be positive recurrent if and only if pi equals to pi p. In the proof of the theorem, we used it and we have also used it in many, many theorems. Now, why this is true? Okay, so, so understand this, now let us come back to our setup here again. One thing we have defined is m of t is equals to what? We have defined it to be m of k such that z of k is less than or equals to z. And we call this m of t as what? What? We called it actually renewal process, right? And this is defined for any t. So, we have called it as a renewal process. And this is for defined for every t. You give me arbitrary time t, then I am going to tell you how many renewals have happened in the interval 0 t. So, what was what is that m of t is telling? Basically, m of t is telling how many renewals have happened in the interval 0 to t. Now, yes, this t here is continuous time, but I, I so if it is case, I may also be interested in knowing what happens at some m of n where n is my some integer valued. I can ask this question, right? If, if, if this is going to be defined for every possible t that is real, I could as well ask for a particular integer value. So, so then what is m of n? So, that is in that case I can just write it as indicator that y k is equals to j starting k equals to 1 to n. Is this right? This is basically the number of times I have state hit state j till time n, right, till the nth instance. Okay. Now yeah, let's assume that for time being, all this uh, this uh, y n are such that the n th they are of unit. Uh, so when n I, when I say n equals to one, n equals to two, like this, these are like separated by one unit. So one second, say two second, like the separation between any two integer corresponds to one unit of time. Okay. Now. So, for this also I can define, I am assuming that uh, I am starting from some initial state y equals to i, right. So, I can denote 
the expected value of this to be k equals to n integer k given. So mn is nothing but expectation of this m of n. Earlier we have defined this small m of t which was the expectation of this m of t but now I am looking this function only at the integer valued. So it is fine I can define it in a similar fashion. Now let us look at the average of this quantity m of n by n as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity what you expect m of n by n go to? Is it going to be the same limit as this? Or oh, all, all I am doing is now instead of looking at t at all possible values, I am only looking at t taking integer values. So if I am going to look at this m of t by t, instead of all possible t's, I only look at some integer values. Is this limit is going to be different from this limit or it is going to be different limit? It is going to be the same limit, right? So it has to be expectation of x2. Okay, now let us understand what is this quantity. Now let us focus on this. If I have mn by n, this is going to be what? So this quantity here is expectation of 1 by n summation k equals to 1 to n integer by k is equals to j given y not equals to i, right? I am just writing the expression for this. Now what I want, I am interested in knowing the limit of this. So I am just writing this quantity in this. Now limit as n tends to infinity, this expectation. Suppose if I interchange this expectation on limit, what is this quantity is going to be when I take this expectation inside, then expectation of indicator becomes what? Probability of given y not equals to i, right? So is that same as saying probability of i j superscript k, right? Then you see that you will end up with something very similar to what we have here, okay. So before that, fine, if I do that, I already see I am going something what I want, but how can I interchange this? When can I interchange expectation and limit here? Can I do that here? So we have been asking this question many times, right? You are all, many times we are facing with this problem of interchanging limit and expectation. Can I do it here and when I can do it? We know when we can do it. We have seen a couple of cases where we can do it. But the question is, is this corresponds to one of those cases? So which of this results like we know? Dominance convergence theorem, monotone convergence theorem, bounded convergence theorem, which one we can apply here? Bounded convergence theorem. So if I apply, I should be able to expect interchanges expectation and limit. So because of that, I could as well write it as things, right? So actually, I really, I really do not need to worry about that, right? Because the expectation is already inside. So why I need to worry about interchanging them. So I think you guys did not notice this. So I could directly, so anyway this is a finite summation, right? I really do not need to worry about uh, interchanging that. So I can already always plug in this and what I get is basically 1 by n 
c i j of k k equals to 1 to n. Why this is i? Because I am conditioned that it is going to start from y not equals to i. Now we know that this limit is equals to 1 upon expectation of x2. So we now are saying that this gamma j whatever we have we had earlier is nothing but that was 1 upon expectation of x2. Okay. So now let us look at what is this expectation of x2. What is x2? x2 is the number of time it took to visit my state j for the second time, right? What will be its expected value? So, okay, what is this value of x2 can be? What values it takes? x2 takes what values? Integer value, right? And what is the probability that it takes some value n? 1 by n? Why? So, what is what is the meaning that x2 is equals to n? That means my Markov chain visited return to j again after exactly n rounds, not before that, right? We have used a notation for that. What was that? F j j n, right? We are talking about starting from state j going back to that. And that one, so because of that, this guy is going to be F j j of n. Is this correct? The expected value of x2. And this also we have denoted as what? Nu j j, right? And what would we say? When this nu j j is going to be finite, we state this state j to be, are you sure? When v j is finite, is now we say that j is positive recurrent if v j j is less than infinity and we said that j is null if v j j is infinity. <coughs> now let us compare this, this quantity here what we are actually showing is this gamma j here is nothing but 1 upon nu j j right. So is this correct? This gamma j is nothing but 1 upon expectation of x2 that we have shown it to be 1 upon nu j j. Now when this state j is positive recurrent, I know that this nu j j is finite. So this quantity has to be positive. When nu j j is infinity, that is when j is null recurrent, then nu j j is infinity, then this quantity has to be 0, right. So basically what this result we used earlier is nothing but a simple consequence of our elementary renewal theorem, okay. Now let us further go back one step. So what we are basically saying is the gamma j we have defined is nothing but nu j. If you now recall the theorem we showed for positive recurrence, right? We said that uh, my irreducible DTMC is positive recurrent if and only if 
pi equals to pi p. And how did we show that such a pi exists? We showed that that pi was nothing but this gamma j, right? When we actually showed, we needed to show a pi exists such that pi equals to pi p. And that pi was, we have exactly took that pi to be this gamma j. So, our pi j is nothing but the reciprocal of 1 by the, uh, the it is just like 1 upon nu j j, right. So, now how to interpret this? This expectation is what? This expectation is about the number of rounds to return to state j, right? This is the expectation on that. Now, I am going to return to that state often. That means, this expectation is going to be small, right? Then what is this quantity is going to be? Pi j per the corresponding j large. That means, I am going to see that more and more, right? So, that probability that my Markov chain is visiting that state, state j is going to is going to happen with high probability. And the probability of that is going to be high. That is because the number of times to visit that state again is going to be small. So, I will be frequently visit coming back to that state quickly because of that I am going to see that state again and again many times. So, the probability that, so also recall that this pi j is the stationary probability that my Markov chain will be in state j, right? So, because of that I will, if this guy is going to be too small, I am going to see my Markov chain in that state j for a large fraction of time. That is the probability of me seeing my Markov chain in state j is going to be high, okay. Now, So, you should be able to bit more comfortable in applying these results like uh, if you want to interpret okay, how frequently I am going to visit a particular state and how that is going to be related to is number of mean, mean visits to that time, you should be able to connect all these results and uh, derive any properties, uh, any relevant properties about the Markov chain. Okay, fine. Now, let us come back to our uh, renewal process. The way we started defining our renewal process is by taking an underlying discrete time Markov chain, right? We say that, okay, let us y n be a discrete time Markov chain starting in some state i and now I am interested in visit to particular state j and for that j I will construct a renewal process, okay. So, when we did like that, the number of visits to, number of slots it took to return to the same state j that was all integer valued, right. But uh, it is not necessary that we have to build a renewal process like this. Renewal process is about anything where you are interested in something happening again and again, right? For example, in the battery case, we said that, okay, when the battery life ends, battery life may end at any time, right? It need not be integer valued something. So, one could be taking a renewal process as simply something where you have the lifetimes are such that they are identically distributed and uh, all I am saying is identically distributed. I am not saying this x has to be integer valued. 
they could be poss possibly continuous valued okay such that r at iid or more generally i can just take anything so instead of making this special case i will just say henceforth for simplicity i am i can take a sequence of rid including the first one okay so when i talked about my dtmc case i said okay i am interested in retaining to state j particular j given that i started in a particular state i i could as well say why start with i i would start with j and then look at returning to that state in that case i don't need to make a separate uh, distinguish between the first cycle and the subsequent cycle right i can they are all returning to the same state starting from the state same state so in that case i could just say that this lifetimes are all id right so i i will not make a special distinguish distinction about the first cycle all cycles i am going to treat the same including the first one and in that case i'll simply make extensor id now actually we have already looked at a renewal process where this extensor exponentially distributed what was that process we called what is what was that called poison right we have already looked into a poison process where inter arrival what we call basically inter count times are all exponentially distributed and if this in if this extensor are exponentially distributed with parameter lambda then actually we had said that this is nothing but a poison process with rate lambda right so this is nothing but so in this process what we are saying so how did we describe our poison process basically we said that poison process is a counting process which is basically counting something and the time between two counts is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda right so there count can happen at any time it is not has to happen at all some discrete time slots right so in that way poisson process is actually continuous time process so for example one case we said that okay when you guys enter into the class one guy came that is the first count happened after some time second guy came that is the second count happened and after some time third guy came like that so here you guys are not coming at some discrete times right you are coming at some some time so poisson process is about continuous time process and now but also it is basically counting something that are discrete and inter arrival times there are all exponentially distributed and this exponential distribution is again continuous uh, random variables now the question is how to define okay so now let's we should be so this is basically poisson process is also a kind of a renewal process in that sense right it is basically looking at the counts as something happening again and again and it is just keeping tracks of how many counts has that has happened so far now let's define m of t for this that is number of the counts that has happened 
in the interval 0 to t. So, this is as usual. So, no, this is a general thing, this is for any renewal process. So, I can also define the same thing for my Poisson process, right? And then it is Zk here, which is nothing but x1 plus x2 all the way up to xk being less than or equals to t. I can define this right for Poisson process also. So, the Poisson process is characterized in terms of this inter arrival times and uh, that is going to define my count instances that is Zk's. So, once I know that I already know I can define my renewal process like this. Now, What is this basically m of t? m of t is the number of arrivals in the interval 0 t, right. So, for a Poisson process, number of arrivals in the interval in the in the interval 0 t, what was that? Poisson right and what is the mean of that 1 by lambda t lambda t right so what do you expect this to be what do you expect this to be lambda t right so this is by connecting so, if I have defined it, I mean this is a general process I have defined, right? I, I can define this anything. But if you are going to do this on a Poisson process, you are going to get this. Now, and this is by the argument saying that this is just by the interpretation, okay? M of t is nothing but the number of arrivals or counts in the interval 0 t, and I know that is Poisson distributed with rate lambda t and that has to have a mean bit. But you can also using this notion that Zk is the sum of this, you should be able to again derive the same thing, okay. So you have to check that. Another thing for a Poisson process, let us say these are my lifetimes, right. With respect to this process, lifetime process, I can define a stopping time that stopping time is m of t. Let us sorry, sorry, I am going to not stopping time, I am going to define a random time m of t on x. So, m of t is what? Basically, m of t is always integer valued, right? Even though it is defined for every t, but m of t is giving you integer valued numbers and this is all, this is all itself is a random quantity, right. So, now I am saying let us take this sequence and define a random time on that, okay. Now, I want to ask the question, is m of t is a stopping time on this sequence? is this random time is a stopping time on the sequence x i's or x n's. So, suppose if I want if I know that okay basically what I know to know if I want to answer the question is m of t is less than or equals to n is it enough to know x 1 x 2 x n is this true? So, suppose let us say you have been given x1, x2 all the way up to xn. So, if I if you know x1, x2 all the way up to xn and uh, you have been also given t, okay. If m of t is less than or equals to n, what I know? This sum has to be less than or equals to t, 
right? But does it also say you that the n n plus one lifetime has not happened within this first in within this t? Yeah, but uh, the, all we know is x one plus x two is going to be less than or equals to t. So the, what is this? Because so this is nothing but if I sum all of them, x i is going to be is going to be uh, what is this? This is going to be n, right? This I know as z n, and I know that z n has to be less than if m of t is less than or equals to n, I know z n has to be less than or equals to t. That we know. Z n plus one, but you don't know anything about you. You have been not told at uh, x n plus one. As this x one plus one, if you add to this, that will go beyond t. Or it is still going to remain within T. Huh? May be or may not be, right? So because of this, without knowing x n plus one, I can't say that m t is going to be less than or equals to n. Is this clear? That is what we want to answer. Whether m t is going to be less than or equals to n, the question is: Can we answer this based on this information? Oh, sorry, I want to ask this question right. Whether m of t is equals to n, can we can I answer this question completely? So it depends. Unless I know that the x n plus one that is going to happen. Has to happen after type t that that this sum. If I add x n one x n plus one to this sum, that is going to be larger than t. I can't say this, right? So if only if it happens that guy after adding that, if that guy exceeds t, then I know that till n things have been incorporated. N plus one is going to stay outside. Okay. So because of this. We can't really say that this is going to be a yeah, m of t is going to be a stopping time with respect to m uh, with the, with my uh, sequence x n. Okay. This stopping time. Okay, just a minute. I'm. I think we can also argue that. So, let's try to make this more formal, right? Okay. So, uh, you are right. So, to make uh, to to apply for the uh, stopping time, we have to just not worry about equality. We have to answer this question. Okay. So, let's try to answer this. Okay, what we can do is is this correct? So I am saying that in a, at any time t, m of t has to either less than or equals to n, or it has to be greater than or equals to n plus one. This indeed one of this must be true, and this should be equals to one. Now two. I am going to write this bit n plus one, and what is this going to be? One minus m of t is going to be greater than or equals to n plus one, right? One minus of this. What is this is going to be? So this is going to be basically. We have already said that if m of t has to be greater than or equals to n plus one, in terms of z n plus one, what we know? We know that this guy has to be z n plus one has to be less than or equals to t. 
we have argued that these two are the same event, events right. So, this both must be equal ok, ok now let us see this z m plus 1 is nothing but summation of first n events right. It is correct. I have just applied the definition of this is n plus 1 here. Now, if I want to look at this 1 minus of this, this is basically 1 minus of this means the complement of this event, right. What is the complement of this event? The complement of this event summation of i equals to 1 to n plus 1 x i is greater than or equals to t. Is this correct? Now, the question that 1 the, the question that is m of t is go is less than or equals to n has boiled down to asking the question whether the sum of the first n plus va values has exceeded t right you see that. So, what we want to know that n arrivals has happened in the within the interval 0 t to ensure that I need to be confident that the nth plus 1 has not completely occurred within the interval 0 t right. It must have ended after tan t. So, that is what exactly it is capturing. This is going to be the same as asking the question whether the first n plus 1 x i is their sum is going to exceed t and uh, so answering this question is equivalent to this and to answer this questions how many x i's I need to know n plus 1 right. So, just knowing n random variables is not enough for me here. So, you can also just like that think intuitively right? now that we have written this if you want to know that within my interval 0 to t less than or equals to n might have happened and no more that must be the case that n complete renewals might have must have been completed in that and n plus 1th must not have been completed within the interval 0 to t. Had n plus 1th has also been completed in the interval 0 to t then m, m t would have taken the value n plus 1 right it would have been greater than n. So, if m of t has to less than or equals to n it must be the case that n plus 1th renewal might have completed in the after time t. So, that is exactly it is capturing. So, because of that m t is uh, not a stopping time. Now, so, you somehow feel by this information that if I want to know that n arrivals or renewals has happened in the in the duration 0 to t, I need to know not n variables, but actually n plus 1 n, n plus 1 uh, renewal lives right or uh, n plus 1 x i's. So, it so turns out that m of t is not a stopping time, but if you just look at m of t plus 1 is a stopping time. Why is that? This is also actually obvious. So, if I want to check whether m of t plus 1 is a stopping time, replace m of t by m of t plus 1 right that is basically asking the question whether m of t is upper bounded by n minus 1. So, in that case I have to replace n by n minus 1 
So, in this case it just summation happens to be i equals to 1 to only n. So, in that case it only depends on the n random variables, but uh, again yeah, this is the argument but convince yourself that if I want to check whether mt plus 1 is a stopping time that is the case.